Thank you. Awesome. Thanks Very so nice. much. Awesome job. Very nice. Thanks for stopping by. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you yeah. doing? Sounds yeah. amazing. I'm well. I'm a lot uh, better now after hearing yeah. that. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. But I want to talk about the record. It's okay. out everywhere. You said September 1st. It's crazy how time's flying through summer. September 1st is tomorrow. So oh, the it, record is it, out. It is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Songs about Dylan. And I guess I want to take it back to where this all started really quick. I think it's a fascinating story. It's really these shows at the uh, Cafe Carlisle you were doing the past couple of years. Yeah, that's right. Um, we got a, a residency there. And, you know, it's got a history as a great cabaret room. But I'm not really a cabaret singer. So I thought maybe there's a way to take this idea and sort of update it and sort of make it suit what you know what my thing is so we thought we could pick a particular writer and do like a songbook uh, residency and choose different songs from a particular writer so because I you know love Bob Dylan's music and have covered it in the past and even had the honor to sing with him before I felt a real kinship to him and I thought he'd be the perfect uh, artist to choose and, and writer to choose definitely you know you talk about that love for Bob Dylan it's, it's a, a parent on the record it's obviously a parent of those uh, Carlisle dates what are your first memories of Dylan like how far back does this go with Dylan and you? You know, it, uh, it, that's a good question. Of course, you know, I was was too young to have heard the things that he first had on the radio and songs like Blown in the Wind, uh, you know. But um, when I started to really sing uh, in New York City and started to uh, kind of cut my teeth down in the blues clubs and the folk clubs in Greenwich Village, you know, his ghost is kind of everywhere down there. It's not only the places that he used to play, but his work is played pretty much every night in, you know, either a rock club or a folk club or a blues club. Somebody is going to be playing a Bob Dylan song. So I got a real education in his music at that point. Right. Something I love that you did is, you know, you're, you're covering Bob to a certain extent, but I was lucky enough, I was given the record this week to listen to, and I love it. But you, you really, you made the songs your own. You know, I, I struggle even calling it a cover record, right? Because you, you, you tweak the arrangements on a lot of the songs. And I was interested to ask you here on Billboard Live, is there a particular song on the record? I believe there's 13 tracks on the, on the, the uh, collection. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular song that you feel underwent the greatest transformation from the original Bob Dylan work to what you eventually put on the record? Uh, that's a good question. I would say probably uh, the song Rainy Day Women, number 12 and 35, which everyone knows as Everybody must get stoned. Uh, you know, it's because it was his biggest charting single. We felt like that really gave us license to do something very different with it, and we kind of turned it into like a slinky nightclub vamp in a way. Uh, and we've we've been getting a lot of really great reactions from from playing that live. People seem to really uh, love it. Definitely. You know, there's so many great Dylan songs out there. How did you whittle it down to 13? How what was that process like of choosing the songs for this particular album? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I could certainly do another 10 records of nothing but Bob Dylan songs because he has so many amazing songs. Um, but for me, one of the, the lenses that I wanted to look at this through was uh, let's take a look at all of his career. And so I wanted to pick songs not only from his classic 1960s period or the, the late 70s period of like uh, blood on the tracks, but also some things that he did in the 1980s, some things that he did in the 90s and into the 2000s. He's continued to be a really vital and amazing artist and writer, so I wanted to touch on those aspects of his career. And I also wanted to do some things that people were very familiar with, uh, like the Rainy Day Women song, um, and I also wanted to do things that people didn't know as well. So a song like High Water, because it's from later in his, period, his uh, career, people may not know as well. Uh, there's a song uh, from the Empire Burlesque record that not a whole lot of people know that we did. So uh, so I, I wanted to do some things that people were familiar with and would be like, oh, I can't wait to hear that song, yeah. and then also allow them to discover something different. Definitely. You, know, you, talk, you touch on all the different Dylans we've known throughout the years from the 60s to the 2000s. Do you personally have a favorite era of Dylan yourself? Uh, if you had to choose, we're putting you on the spot uh, here. Okay. But. Uh, you know, i, I got to say, I, I think that the work that he did – uh, in the late 1980s with a record called Oh Mercy is some of my favorite stuff of his. So if I'm, if I'm put on the spot, I would, I would pick that. One of my favorite songs off the album, which I don't know if it's off Oh Mercy or not, but it's Ring Them Bells. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that is. That's that is off, off Oh Mercy. Mercy. Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. I love Ring Them Bells, and oh, I know that's a song that means a lot to you. You played at a bunch of uh, post-9-11 shows here in New York that you were doing back in the day. Talk about how timeless that song is and how it can even relate to what maybe some issues we're facing today mm -hmm. as a country. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a real testament to how powerful and timeless Dylan's work is that you can take a song that was written, you know, 30 years ago, and it's got real meaning to, to people now, and it really speaks to what we're 
living through now, and not even in a direct way, but more in a poetic way, where a little phrase will kind of hit you in the chest and make you feel like, oh my gosh, that's, that's the exact thing that I was feeling, but I didn't know how to express it. So uh, a song like Ring Them Bells, I think, has a, a real uh, kind of a, a dignity in being sorrowful, yet also uh, feeling like you're going, to, uh, you're going to continue moving forward and you're going to lift yourself up. And, and I feel like that's something that you know, was, was very uh, appropriate and, and uh, touched a lot of people um, right after 9-11. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we can also think about right now in an, in an era where our country is so divided, we need to find ways to to come together and to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. You've had a, a very busy summer with these shows. You've been uh, hitting festivals, I think, and, and doing your own concerts. And yeah. it's going to continue into the fall, and tickets are available for the fall dates. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the concerts this fall that are coming up? Well, we're doing a lot of this material from, from the Bob Dylan record, and because we learned a lot more songs than we had room for on the album, there'll be some sort of live-only bonus things that you won't be able to stream or download, and you'll have to come up and, and see the show in order to, to get those. Nice. And you're, you're doing a bunch of cities, a bunch of dates. You're going to be in my home state of New Jersey, I think, in October. I'm looking forward to catching yeah. that show. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks so much for stopping by. The record, yeah. again, Songs of Bob Dylan. It's out yep. everywhere tomorrow. Stream it, buy it, do whatever you got to do to get your ears on it. We and got John vinyl, too. And vinyl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I'm a big mm -hmm. vinyl guy myself. Cool. Uh, Joan, thanks so much for stopping by. You're so welcome. Thanks for having us.